from the very beginning, it just was impressed upon my heart, the concept of dreaming big and praying hard. It was impressed upon me that, that God said, it's time for this congregation to dream again. Not that they hadn't dreamt, but it was time for us to dream again, to dream anew. Why not? What a, what a better chance to do that than with a new guy in town. From that day forward, there was just such a, an amazing spiritual momentum. It was just so natural to continue to bring the concept of prayer in, into the conversation. The idea of praying for God's breakthroughs, for us to continue to, dr to, to pray big dreams and, and, and to dream big dreams and to, and to circle those promises that God was giving us in those dreams. Um, with prayer and, and the whole Breakthrough Prayer initiative to change people's lives. One of the things that I was praying about in this whole idea of bold leadership and stepping into God's preferred future, taking a hold of the promises He's given us, was around the idea of giving in this church. And I prayed about whether I should wait a, a more than a few months to begin some new initiatives, but with November coming and December coming, it was a perfect time for us to pray about doing something new when it came to talking about giving and, uh, and how we were gonna operate with our finances. For many, many years, this church has operated with pledge campaigns. In other words, they were given a card, they were to pray over it, and they were to write down the amount that they were gonna give in the next year. And out of that, our Board of Servant Leaders and the finance team would determine what our budget was gonna be. I decided in my heart, and I got it placed there, was to believe that it was time for a new process of talking to people about finances, but to wrap that and debate that into concepts of prayer, to really, to really say, are we gonna do what we believe? Are we gonna do what we're praying about? And are we gonna do what God is answering us to do and calling us to do? So, so that's when I introduced the concept of the 90-day tithe challenge. John presented in a way that in this meeting that I thought, 90-day challenge, wow. Being a financial chairperson, tough to talk about that, especially in church. We discuss it all the time around our meetings and everything. But anyhow, they, it became a topic on, in our meeting and John said he was going to do this and I thought, let's try it, why not? Why not? I'll always remember when we started that sermon series in November around how to be rich, and we talked about what it meant to truly be rich. I was circling that sermon series in prayer on a regular basis personally. The Board of Servant Leaders was praying over it as well, and we believed that God was about to do something big. Uh, little did I know how big it was going to be. When you pray, God offers surprises to you that you can't even fathom or dream. You think you know, but God continued to, to just surprise us and bless us. So, I remember that very first Sunday in that sermon service when I stood up and announced to the congregation that, that God didn't need their money, that the church didn't need their money, but that they needed to give it and introduced the whole idea of the 90-day tithe challenge where I told people, listen, we just simply need to obey the biblical concept of tithe. Let's not nickel and dime God anymore. Let's not make things up to make ourselves feel better. Let's just do what He says. And if we're willing to do that, it will open up an avenue of blessing into our hearts. And I said to them, listen, if after 90 days you decide to tithe, don't add up the money, don't, don't see if it's, gonna, if it's gonna add up financially, because um, God is in the multiplication, not addition. If after 90 days it doesn't work for you, if you find yourself financially worse off, it's created more strain and stress in your life and in your marriage, you come to me and we'll give you every dime back if you've given it in an accountable way. We will give you every dime back if it hasn't worked for you. To this day, we had almost 50 families sign up for the 90-day tithe challenge, and I have not had one person come back to me to say that they have not been blessed in an extremely powerful way. When Pastor John announced or told the congregation about the 90 day you know, tithing t challenge, um, it's something that Shane and I both you know, had struggled with off and on. We were never regular tithers. And when we were, it was maybe just 20 or $30 here and there, you know, just whatever we might've felt comfortable doing. And um, I said, you know, I talked to Shane about it and we both prayed and I said, why not? You know, what are we gonna lose? And Pastor John said that if, if we can show him that it did nothing for us, that he'd give us our money back. You know, I mean, it's a win-win situation. And so we did that, I mean, every Sunday. And his mom came into the salon where I work and then called Shane on the phone and um, handed us a free and clear title to his truck. And we're seeing this showing up in the giving in the church. Giving has gone up exponentially. We had, we had, we had givings in, in December that were the largest, some of the largest uh, single Sunday givings we've had in the history of this church. 
And for the first three months into the year of 2014, we're almost $30,000 ahead of in this first three months where we were at this time last year. And we're pushing 18 to 20 percent increase in what God is doing here. And it's just been humbling and amazing. I, I just see this church growing and I just see people coming in here so filled with the Holy Spirit and so want to be active in the church and to want to give to the church. And in the last several months, the giving has increased that I really feel it's coming from people's hearts. It's not being a commitment anymore. It's coming from their hearts. They're giving because they want to give. The result of the giving isn't just the giving itself, but it's the result of the changed lives and, and the blessings upon our community. Those thousands of people within a five mile radius of Rolling Plains Church that don't yet know Jesus Christ. And we have a chance as a church to continue to be that attractional and also missional experience that he's calling us to be. But I believe that none of that's gonna happen without the power of prayer, without the power of a breakthrough initiative to invite the Spirit of God to blow afresh upon our hearts, upon this church, upon our leadership, and upon anything that we believe God is calling us to do. It's gonna first start with prayer, and it's gonna be prayer that's gonna be the catalyst and the catapult into what God has for us in His preferred future.